food hall inspired by this book. If you want ultimate health and sports performance without harming the animals or the planet, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon so you're notified of new videos and new live streams. So we received the How Not To Die cookbook yesterday. It's amazing. It's everything, oh things are falling down behind me. It's everything you could wish for and more. We really love it. My one's got this in there. That's me, that is. <laughs> All the great foods. And just, it's invited us to be a bit more adventurous, you know. We've got a bit stuck in the rut with our food choices and we want to stock up this uh, recommendations for like kitchen, cupboard, you know, things to stock up on and, and stuff. So we, we went to the local health food store, just got a few bits, so uh, we'll show you those now. You know, chia seeds there, great for Omega-3. Usually we have flax seeds, but I'm thinking we'll get some of those in as well. Ground flour, so chickpea flour, we can make lovely whole food things with that. Um, pakoras, things like that sort of thing. There was an onion rings recipe that used that in his book, yeah. so we're yeah, looking forward to trying that out. And he and he's spoke of um, not always porridge for breakfast, so here I've got some cold cereal that I can have. This has got goji berries and cranberries in there, and it's just different cereals. Soya flakes, sultanas, rice flakes, golden linseed, sunflower seeds, raw buckwheat, puff quinoa, uh, and those berries, as I said. So that'd make a nice change now and again. We thought we'd get some balsamic on the go, just for a bit of a different flavour that we can have in with our cooking. He's a big one for BPA free, you know, the plastic liner that they use in some cans. So these are BPA free, they're also organic. So I've got some pinto and some black eyed beans. Pickled chilies, just to have the odd one here and there, just to, you know, enliven dishes. We like this cashew nut butter, it's not roasted. When we heat fatty, protein rich things, we create advanced glycation end products, which really accelerate the aging process, so a gerontotoxin. Uh, and so by having them raw rather than roasted, you're not getting that terrible uh, burden. Most vegans will be familiar with uh, nutritional yeast or niche. Uh, if you've not come across it yet, it's a delicious, Sprinkle on the top like a nutty, cheesy sort of taste, the little flakes, you can make sauces and things. Just adds uh, a depth of flavour to some dishes. Got some brown rice pasta, just to mix it up, I have pasta. Generally I have whole intact grains, but you know, let's not get stuck in a rut. Well this, Ras Al Hanu, I think I know how you pronounce it, but for Moroccan type dishes. Today we made um, tagine, which is actually out of the, the book. And he called for a lot of different spices, but actually it was that spice mix pretty much. So that was really delicious, wasn't it, Gem? I didn't have any. Oh yeah, he smelled <laughs> it. Um, weirdly, I picked these up the other day. These organic apricots. Look out for sulfur dioxide, which, can which produces hydrogen sulfide in the gut, which can lead to GI tract problems like eating animal products can. So sulfites in wine and the sulfur dioxide, avoid those. Yeah, for some reason, something made me pick these up. Um, and we said, oh, which recipes shall we do? Just have to open the book on that page. And I was like, wow, we've got all the stuff. Like this was like meant to be. And it was, it was amazing. We'll do a recipe video soon. So, sorry, Dr. Gregor. <laughs> got this as well. Someone said that this is really high in antioxidants. I've never used it before, but we'll give that a go. I didn't even know what sort of cuisine that is. Eh? Produce of turkey. He picks up white miso in the book a lot as a salty additive and he's claiming that the phytochemicals in the miso actually offset the damage you can get from the salt. So why not? Dried figs, some of the recipes call for that so we'll have that in stock. Not had any tempeh for a while so thinking I might make something with that as well. And then I thought I'd get more adventurous with the grains. So we've got some buckwheat, we've got organic brown basmati rice which is lower in arsenic relative to other rices so that might be nice We've got amaranth in there as well got a little salsa just to spice things up a vegetable stock we're making some of the dishes with we're getting into this now i heard on a podcast i think it's called jamie j-a-m-i jamie dulaney's um plant-based wellness podcast she's a really great plant-based doctor over in america um episode 130 i think she interviewed this guy calling herself Dr. B, and he's a um, gastroenterologist. Uh, and some of this stuff, I'm learning more and more about the microbiome, how those little 
bacteria in our gut are so pivotal to health. Uh, one thing he was saying was like a probiotic has eight different cultures in like a really good one. This may have 680 different, cult different bacteria in that are really beneficial to health. So we're gonna start making our own, but in the interim, just got some of that in. So we're gonna have that on the daily. Another thing we're gonna get into is more sprouting. You know, all these little seeds and grains and legumes. Once they start to sprout, the nutrition is increased exponentially. It's just so nutrient dense. So why not? I got um, broccoli sprouts recently. They're the most sulforaphane for your butt, which is real health promoting. And this, this is a range of different, we can get broccoli, but this is a range of different ones. So. Looks really easy to grow as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah. so that'll be nice. We're gonna grow it. So that, that, I think we'll enjoy that. Got some buckwheat ramen. Still, like nine times out of 10, I'm gonna eat, eat my intact grains, but, oh, something else. So, like these branchier batter rolls, one times out of 10. I'm gonna have a pasta, I'm gonna have a bread type thing. Like, why not? Um, I don't know. If you don't follow the channel, you might not be aware, but by eating intact grains, we leave more of the food undigested, which might pass through. It might not get absorbed through the small intestine into our bodies. And then we're, we're known as hind gut fermenters, so our good bacteria that we need to thrive, they live in the colon. So by milling whole grains down into flour, it's so fine and we absorb more into our bodies, leaving them to, to starve, you see. So that's the point. But I eat so much food, like they'll probably still do all right, you know, so just for the sake of variety. Tell us about these, Jim. You picked these up today, so biodegradable bin bag liners and parchment paper yeah I mean, not, I mean I have had some things like that before but I must admit I've not been very consistent with caring about that sort of thing and yeah. I really that's one of my major things for the new year yeah I want to cut back I, on plastic yeah. I'm really disappointed in myself that I've not taken it it's more hard, seriously isn't it? so far you know I'm thinking I want more variety but then how many things can you get you yes. know that are not all in plastic so yes at the place we went which is the green grocers at earlham house on earlham road they have got hoppers with all different so we did try to get our grains from there like this one. Oh yeah so that pack is all degradable the whole pack yeah you can take your own tub and fill it up and then buy what you've filled yeah. up as well you just pop your empty tub on the scales you tear it uh, and then you put the label on so it tells the obviously the shop people how much to take off but so you're not paying extra for your content. I just noticed, Gem, this says yep. uh, chlorine free. Yes. So again, going back to that podcast about the microbiome, what he was saying was, whatever is the health issue of the time, what people are dying of, that's what you have to address. And back in the day, people were getting sick and dying off of drinking water. So they put chloride in the water, which kills bacteria. Now his point is, that wasn't a mistake. That was a great, uh, benefit to humanity at the time. However, now we've got bottled water, distilled water, filter water. Why are we still dumping chloride on our good bacteria and wrecking? They are so pivotal to our health. Really, we have to find out so much. This is my most interesting area of um, nutrition to me is, is the microbiome. And we need those good guys to thrive. So we need to eat whole plant foods and legumes for the resistant starch and the sol uh, soluble fiber. We need to avoid chloride, alcohol, animal products. You know, the bad guys, they eat animal fats and animal proteins. They eat carnitine from meat. They eat choline from eggs. They create trimethylamine oxide, uh, which creates in our liver, sorry, from the trimethylamine, from the breakdown of those compounds from the bad bacteria, the bacteroidal strains. And that leads to terrible health. It leads to mental health as well, issues of depression, anxiety. Whereas whole plant foods, they give us the, the monoamines. They make us really happy and positive. I know I feel like a world uh, of difference since going whole foods vegan and, and so does Gemma, I'm sure she'll agree. So uh, yeah, that's something. And uh, I've been rambling. Is that about it, mate? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Click the bell notification so you're notified of new uploads, new live streams as they come out. Go vegan for victory.